Hey, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Got the gardenia here. Gonna do, I almost said a quick care video. Y'all know that's not how I do things. We'll call it a detailed discussion on growing gardenias indoors as house plants. That's a specific that I need to point out because there are a few differences between growing them indoors and out. It's that time of year, mid-February into March, a lot of the big box stores start getting in gardenias and azaleas and pushing them out is more of a gift type plant. But it's also the time of year when I generally get questions about growing these. A care video on gardenias, pretty straightforward. I'll put the quick care up here on the screen in just a moment. What gets complicated is all of the many, many, many things that can go wrong when you're growing them. Gardenias, beautiful, lovely, glossy green foliage, evergreen shrubs, known for the fragrance in their flowers and the heavenly scent that comes off of these plants, generally spring through fall, there are exceptions. Lots of great varieties to choose from. They come in various sizes, various growth rates, various cold hardiness too, if you're thinking about growing them outdoors. I'll touch on a few varieties that I really like, including this one right in front of me. Get right to it, talk about what needs to be done, what a gardenia likes to grow. I'll go ahead and do the quick care, put that up on the screen. Feel free to take a screenshot. Maybe you don't like watching long videos. Here's just the rundown, the basic stuff about growing gardenias indoors. For starters, gardenias like a good amount of light. Full sun indoors, six to eight hours a day. Put them in a south, southwest facing window. Morning sun, afternoon shade if you have them outdoors when it's really hot. They're like an organically rich, well-drained soil. They are acid loving plants, so try and keep them in a pH range of about five to six. My soil pHs are usually around 6.8 and I haven't had problems before, but I do amend and fertilize with fertilizers that are made for acid loving plants. Amending the soil with organic materials like compost manure, earthworm castings, those are going to help provide even moisture with the plant. And as those break down, those also help give a steady supply of acidity. They help acidify the soil in more of a steady way. Humidity is important. Dry air can be problematic. Brown leaf tips, more prone to spider mites, those sorts of things. So keep the humidity up around them. If possible, airflow, very helpful as well. Not directly on the plant, but just good air circulating around the plant helps cut back on issues with spider mites. During the active growing season, which is generally March through October, I like to fertilize with a fertilizer that's formulated for acid loving plants and I will normally dilute it to about half to three quarters strength just to avoid burning the roots. Print off spent blooms help encourage them to keep on flowering and these are pest magnets and they are disease prone. White fly scale, soft scale, mealy bugs, aphids, spider mites, you name it, they're susceptible to it. Diseases like powdery mildew, leaf spot, sooty mold, just to name a few. And they are toxic to pets so keep them away from curious mouths. So tell me, the, for real, comment down below. What are your thoughts on this? After everything I just said about this plant, does it sound like a good house plant? Probably not because they, I'm not gonna go on and pretend like, oh, gardenias make excellent house plants. No, not for a lot of people because they like a good amount of light indoors. They also are plants that like warmth. They can be tricky. If their needs aren't met in a few critical areas, there are a lot of problems that can arise. Mostly when I was talking about the pests and diseases, they don't have the right light, they don't have the right airflow and humidity and uh, pH in their soil. All kinds of things can go wrong. To be fair, yes, that's something we can say about pretty much all plants. But I think it's because these want to be more on the acidic side and that can be more difficult to achieve sometimes indoors that the problems can be more prevalent. Also, there's the management of expectations. A lot of people buy a gardenia and they just want the flowers. Understandable, that's the main reason we grow them. I think that they're beautiful even when they're not in flower. I love the glossy green foliage that they have. The majority of the questions I get with the plant usually center around the flowering of the plant, whether it's how to get it to keep flowering or why are the buds falling off. And uh, the others just being, what the heck is wrong with it? Get pictures from people on Instagram and generally the problem is related to soil pH or not enough light. There can be multiple things causing one problem sometimes. That's why I put the quick care up there on the screen. We do a process of eliminations by seeing what's up there and see what's going right for the plant, what's not going right for the plant and help eliminate some variables and figure out what's going on with them. The lighting aspect is really important in regards to just the overall health of the plant, obviously, but the flowering. We want our gardenias to flower with abundance and nice, healthy, strong blooms. Then they need all of the light that they require. Now, I have this one right here, which has set bud quite a while ago, 
And that was over in a darker spot of my growth space because I just was letting the plants chill. Wasn't trying to push any growth at them, just letting them stay in more of a cool, dark area. I, my growth space isn't as cool as it used to be, so I've repotted it and it's going to get moved onto a shelf with plant lights above it since I can't keep it as cool as it needs to be. The less light and the less warmth that any plant gets, then uh, the less care it's really going to need. You really just need to leave it alone if that's your situation. I wouldn't recommend growing them that way. It's just how I've gotten by over the years with my gardenias. I do the same thing with my oleanders. Some types of bananas I'll do that with where I just let them hang out in a cool, not dark, but a, a I would call a poorly lit area. Then they do okay. They just hold still for a bit. But since this one is set bud, that's why I need to get it under those grow lights. I would like for it to go ahead and open those flowers. So that's not going to happen in a darker spot, in a spot with less light. They need light to push out their flowers and to hold their flowers. Now bud drop, meaning that they've set bud and then those brown up and fall off. There are a lot of things that can cause that. It's usually from some sort of fluctuation, some sort of inconsistency that's thrown the plant off. Temperature is a really big one, being really, really up and down with the watering. Best to try and just keep them consistently moist, but if you're letting it dry out too much, while, especially while it's in bud, and then give it a heavy drink, then it might drop the buds and vice versa. A drastic change in light, in temperature, airflow, humidity. Consistency is key to growing them indoors. Outdoors, you can get away with a little bit more, except for sunlight. If you live in a hot climate like I do, well, hot during the summer, I like for them to have shade in the afternoon, but full sun all morning long. So when I move these outdoors, probably in April or May, sometime in there. Once we're free of frost and having to worry about frost, I can take this out. We'll go in a spot that gets bright morning sun directly on the leaves and shade in the afternoon. Being able to make sure that the plants have the proper pH also, pretty important. That goes into the consistency with the plant. For one, if things are not acidic enough, then there's going to be issues taking up nutrients. So if you notice yellowing in the veining of the leaves, that's probably chlorosis. The gardenia can't pull up the iron that it needs if the soil pH isn't low enough for it. So I like to use fertilizers like Hollytone. That's more of an amendment type fertilizer that you can work into the soil, releases more slowly over time so you don't have drastic up and downs, lots of changes with what's going on down there around the roots of the plant. It can just be a nice, even, slow breakdown to help keep things more on the acidic side. Whereas when you use a liquid fertilizer, which these do appreciate, there's going to be a spike and things are gonna be moving around a lot more frequently. With the liquid fertilizers, I should also mention if they're going to be one that's salt-based, not a bad idea to flush the container out with distilled purified water probably once a month. Give it a nice heavy drink, let it wash through, do that I'd say three to five times. Pay attention to your soil. If you know that your soil doesn't drain as well as it probably should or dry out as quickly as it should, then I would maybe just go three times, just try and get those salts out because salt buildup can cause some problems with the plants as well. Utilizing compost for the plants, very helpful. Just in general, when I say compost, I am meaning organic materials. So earthworm castings, manure, all the things that I listed when I was doing the quick care, those are going to work really well. I like the mushroom compost. I've had good luck with that. That's been a good one for me. I just like to work it in about a handful, sometimes two into the top couple inches of the soil and then water that in. What's nice about adding compost in is that it helps the soil retain moisture and uh, as that breaks down, it helps provide acidity to the plant. I talked a little bit about that in my last video. Didn't really go over the acidity aspect of it, but that is one of the reasons to use organics or under to the plants. It breaks down, it helps with the acidity. Using a peat-based potting mix, also a good idea. Don't know if I said this, probably should have. Never allow them to sit in water, root rot, the, the water will get up in there have a lot of anaerobic action going on. Oxygen around the roots is very important to the plant. So that goes back to the soil. A nice organically rich soil that drains well, drains well also means oxygen rich, that there's going to be oxygen available in the soil for the plants. When it comes to that humidity, I usually don't have a ton of issues with the humidity in the house. And in my house, the humidity is generally between 45 and 60%, it fluctuates throughout the year, but generally 45 to 60% has been good. And that's not really very high, but there can be problems in that 45 to 50% range. Gardenias, prone to spider mites. 
spider mites love these things. I'm shocked that mine is not covered in them because I've been battling spider mites out here doing the whole predator mite thing for the last few months. And it, there's been a drastic improvement. I haven't noticed them on these. I think I just had them tucked away in a safe zone where they weren't able to get to them. Or perhaps because I had them in a location with less light, they weren't growing all that much. There's not a lot of fresh new foliage on there to give the spider mite something to munch on. That's neither here nor there. We don't need to talk about that. The main thing, keep the humidity up around them. Pebble trays with water in them. I, maybe it has to be a massive tray, ideally with the water circulating and moving to make much of a difference with the humidity. But humidifiers are helpful. You can keep them if you have a really bright, sunny bathroom. It'd be a great place to keep the gardenia or just having them surrounded by other plants that also like their soil to stay consistently moist. They're going to get moisture from the transpiration from the plants around them releasing. That's going to provide some more humidity and just more humidity from having all that consistently moist soil around them that's in the pots of the other plants. And then that goes into the airflow. If you're having spider mite issues, think about humidity and airflow, having air moving around the plant, not directly on it, not blasting on the plant, but just where there's some good circulation, they'll appreciate that. As with all house plants, direct drafts and breezes can cause some browning on the edges of the leaves, so that's something to watch out for. Not a huge issue with the gardenias normally, but it can be if you live in more of a dry climate. Temperature, that's another factor to keep in mind with the plants. Average household temperatures are generally okay, though they do like to be more on the warm side. Main thing to think about is going to be how close it is to a window during the winter time. If you have drafty walls or drafty windows and it's like, you know, 10 degrees Fahrenheit outside, that might be kind of chilly for the plant. If the plant's up against the glass, you could have some issues with the foliage that's touching the glass. It wouldn't hurt to pull it back some, give it some space. Nothing wrong with doing that. You can always move your plants around. They've been in the same spot for a couple weeks. They don't seem happy. Try a different spot for it. That temperature that goes back to what I was saying before, the less light, the less warmth, the less water the plant's going to need. The more light, the more warmth, the more water the plant's going to need. If it's just sitting around your house and it's average temperatures, 70-ish degrees Fahrenheit, then I'd water them when the top inch or two of soil becomes dry. That's generally just fine for them. And something to keep in mind with the water, talk about the pH and how important that can be with the success of the plants. Just because you have a lot of organics down there in the soil, maybe you use Hollytone or some other, like the Job's brand of whatever they have for uh, acid-loving plants, the pH of your water, that will also influence the pH in the soil. So if you have really alkaline water, with meaning just the pH over seven is going to be alkaline. But I'm talking when you get up to like 7.8 and up, maybe 7.5 and up, and that's going to influence the pH that's down here in the soil. You don't have to use acidic water to water the plant, but if you're really struggling, I would give it a try. Fill up a container, get some pH down, something that will help bring the pH level down in the water, water the plants, see if that makes a difference. That's when you're really trying to troubleshoot things. I would try all other avenues before going to that because we have to be realistic. What are you willing to do to keep your plant alive, right? I do adjust for my pH, but I have a very large, very large vessel of water back here. So I only have to do it maybe once or twice a month. That makes it a lot easier. If I were having to do that every time I fill up a watering can, I don't think I would. I doubt that's something that you'll have to worry about, but it's just something to think about. If you're, everything else you're doing seems right, but the plant just isn't happy, check the pH of your water and of the soil. As far as those pests are concerned, I've already mentioned with spider mites and, and even with white fly, it can be helpful to keep the humidity up, keep some air moving around the plant. That's going to help with those. Everything else, cotton swab, and some rubbing alcohol, neem oil, insecticidal soaps. Be prepared, the plant <laughs> might need some TLC in that regard. Because bugs tend to just love these plants. I haven't had a ton of issues with the ones that I've grown, but I get a lot of inquiries when it comes to that with the uh, gardenias. Same thing with citrus too. I never had many issues with pests on my citrus, aphids occasionally when they'd be in flower, but it was never too bad. Taking them to a sink or a shower, blasting the leaves off, that'll help cut down on that. I know some people do that just as a routine, like once every month or two, just to be safe, just gets the dust off the leaves and helps get any pests that might be in there out. It's a small enough plant that that might be doable. Sometimes a small enough plant, depending on what kind you're growing. A lot of them can get fairly large as far as houseplants are concerned. Normally when they're for sale though, they're just kind of little things like this, unless maybe you get a big standard or a bush. Prune off the spent blooms, it'll help encourage them to keep going. Just cut the bud off right below, right at the node. 
That's all you have to do. Simple and straightforward with that and what to do. And then as far as pruning is concerned, that for me is dependent on what type I'm growing. So some gardenias put out a really big show of flowers in the springtime, and then they'll flower sporadically throughout the summer and into fall. Some will keep going throughout the winter. This has had buds on it almost all winter. It's a big show of flowers generally in the springtime. So when they're done with that, that's when I like to go in and do any pruning that the plant might need. If I'm growing a variety like the very popular Vichii, it's a good one to look out for if you're shopping for a gardenia. If after hearing me talk about them, you still want one. Vichii is a heavy bloomer. They throw out flowers like crazy. So with that one, I would say prune the plant probably when temperatures are cooler, not when it's very hot outside. That's when it can become more tricky when it comes to when do I prune the plant because it always has buds on it. Nobody, I never want to go in and cut the foliage back on a plant that is in bud. Do you? I don't. I want to see the flowers. But sometimes the sacrifice just has to be made if you want the plant to stay nice and full and look healthy and have the proper root growth for the aesthetics and health of the plant. It's not a bad idea to give them a prune as a house plant, maybe every couple of years might be when you need to do it. Maybe more frequently. Depends on your conditions and how fast your plant's growing. When I prune gardenias, I generally go a third to two thirds overall. Two thirds I know sounds like a lot because it is, but if I'm trying to get the wood on the plant to thicken up, then I'll do a heavy prune. And I will normally do that in late spring. That way the plant still has plenty of growing season left with the longer day lengths to uh, go ahead and push out lots of new growth and be uh, nice and full and happy again when it gets moved inside. You have some leaves that look like this one right here that, okay, screenshot that, put it back up on the screen so you know what I was talking about. That's just an aged out leaf, not a big deal. You're gonna have some of those. The plants grow, leaves age out. When you touch them, they'll fall right off. I wouldn't be concerned about those. I would be concerned if you're noticing yellowing starting from the bottom, progressing its way up. That can be an indication of nitrogen deficiency. It can be an indication of the plants getting too much water, not enough oxygen down there around those roots. If you're worried about that, give the soil a smell, pay attention to how long it's staying up moist for to help avoid those being a problem. You follow through with what you gotta do to take care of those issues, being just upping the fertilizer or repotting into a fresh mix that drains more appropriately. Or maybe it's been sitting in water, maybe just been overwatering. Oh, looking at mine, see how mine's dusty? Yeah, I have the predator mites out here, so I can't really wash the leaves off. I'd like to. I would really I have some plants out here that are very dusty that I wanna go through and wipe down and get them clean, but I have to wait a few more weeks. If your leaves are dusty, Getting them nice and clean, always a good idea. That's going to allow for more photosynthesis. The house, especially through a window, the lighting's just different, so the leaves being clean, that's going to help a lot with the overall growth of the plant too. And this is a plant that I would say repot as necessary, meaning bump it up one to two inches on the outside diameter when you start to notice that you're having issues with nutrients or with the flow of water, whether it's going through way too quickly or the soil staying moist for too long. Soil over time can become compacted and muddy, doesn't allow as much oxygen as it needs to. That's an indicator that's time to move it up to something larger with a fresh mix, roots coming out the bottom of the top. Another good indicator, I probably would be repotting this one every couple of years, if I had to guess. I have also noticed that the gardenias, at least in my experience, the ones that I've grown, have usually done well when I put them in shallow containers like in a zellia pot. And I think that that's more just that it cuts back on risk of root rot. Having that extra airflow that you get from more of a squat shaped pot, that can help alleviate some of the risks that come into play with root rot and having soil that's not drying evenly. This is in no way a shallow container, but it looks nice. So that's why I use that one. I think that that's, I, did I, I had to have covered everything. There was a lot. I was gonna talk about some fun varieties to grow, but this video has gotten kind of long. That could be a separate one. I mentioned the VCI, that's a fun one. The uh, Miami Supreme, nice big flowers. That's one that I really like. This one right here is the Steady As She Goes, which is uh, one from Proven Winners. I chose this one just because I like the flower shape on it and I like that it's reputed to have sturdy buds. That's a problem I've had with gardenias. I like to move them out probably earlier than I should. And then the drastic change from nighttime temps to daytime temps causes the buds to drop off. And this one's supposed to be more sturdy and hold on to those. And we'll find out about that. This will be the first spring that I've had it. Comment down below, tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciate it. Check out the comment section. 
If you want more info, people always have a lot to add when they watch the cure videos. It's appreciated. It's how we grow, it's how we learn. It's the whole community aspect. I love it. There's some of your favorite varieties. There are tons. There's some with yellow flowers. There's some that stay really short, more like a ground cover. With pinwilly flowers, some with singles and big doubles. Just there's a lot to choose from when it comes to gardenias. I generally aim for hardiness when I'm reading about a gardenia. Of course, the flowering is important, but at the same time, it needs to be sturdy. Disease resistance and sturdiness, those are the things I look for when I'm trying to pick out a variety. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.